So Trevor wondered whether it might be possible to make a portable radio that didn't need batteries at all. Before the show was over, I was into my studio. So I managed to get a bark of sound out of an instrument and that was my, if you like, my eureka moment. And that eureka moment produced this, the world's first clockwork radio. All I've done is added a very good bit of old tech, the clock, with a very good bit of new tech, which is the radio. Mm. And I've just combined them together. So what's inside all that? Well, what you've got is a box which contains uh, a fairly powerful spring. Mm. Um, this particular spring then drives through a, a, a gearbox and uh, some electronics, a generator, which in turn propels the radio. And now all you have to do is to wind the radio up. Just like a clock. That's right, and now it will run without batteries. And with the help of a tree, Trevor's produced an even more inventive radio. Well, what we've done, in fact, is put the generator onto the tree. So it's the same thing, same mechanism? Exactly the same, except this time we use gravity to propel the radio, all right? See, the string goes up and over the pulley here, and then down here onto the bucket. So all I do now is simply wind the handle, and you'll see this bucket come off the ground. I've just put some soil or water into the bucket, and now and you'll see it slowly goes down. How long will that last? Well, it depends on how high the tree is. If you have uh, a very tall tree, this radio would probably run for about two hours. Although Trevor's invention clearly works, he's found it impossible to interest any company in his radio. Starting from the top here, mm. I think this is one of the biggest disappointments I had. This is the uh, Design Council. But, you know, the feeling of rejection when mm. a committee says that what you've done is no good, it's, it hurts, you know. Mm. They don't even get, you know, one would think the Design Council would say, well done, Trevor, we think it's a great idea, we'll try and help you. Yeah. Trevor's written to every electronics company he can think of, and every one has turned him down. They're inclined to think that there's another Wally that's just come out of the woodwork and that he's really not worth speaking to or talking to. Frustrated at the negative responses to his radio, today Trevor and I are off to the BBC World Service. We're meeting Mick Delap of the African section to see if he believes Trevor's radio has a future in the third world. We've got radio listeners around the world. There are, what, 125, 130 million people listening to the BBC. And for many of them, they listen to the radio in a way that, that we just don't appreciate. It's a lifeline for them. And they are desperate for batteries. We've had stories of people in Somali refugee camps, for instance, saving up their rice rations and bartering it for, for batteries. So you think there really is a market? I think there's a tremendous market if it can be, uh, if it can work. <laughs> Trevor's persuaded us that it does, but also, it, obviously, if, if it's marketed at, at an affordable price. So what do you think about uh, Trevor's position having it rejected by all the big companies? I think they are blind to an opportunity. We think it's a great idea, we know how our listeners react, and we think they'd react very favourably to this. Well, at last I've found somebody who believes in what I'm up to. At least the BBC believe I'm on to some sort of a winner. But of course, Trevor still has to find the money to manufacture his radio. The BBC can't provide that 